So today I'm going to talk about deterministic finite automata, which is lecture 10 in this course that I love to teach called CS241. So I'm going to teach you the first nine modules now. Okay, so here's what you should know, okay? So if you came to lecture today, you would know we've talked about formal languages. CS241 is a course about languages, where we study how to understand and determine what a language actually is. And in, order, in order to understand a language, you need to talk about some basic elements, like an alphabet. And what I mean by an alphabet, you might recall, is a finite set of symbols. So we have, in English, the Latin alphabet, A, B, C, down to Z. In ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange, which is you, what you use on a computer, there's more characters in that set. It can be any set of characters. That's what I mean by an alphabet. By a word, I mean a finite sequence of alphabet symbols. Okay, in other words, I can take some alphabet symbols and put them all together to make a word. Right? So in English, C-A-T forms a word called dog. Okay. And then language is a set of words. Okay. And notice I did not put the word finite there because we can have infinite languages. English, as far as I know, is not infinite, although I only know a finite part of it. Okay. But you can, in fact, have an infinite language. So our alphabet is finite, our words are finite in length, but I can still have an infinite language. We've talked about specification versus recognition. What that means is I can describe something and I can also recognize something. So in some senses, a dictionary is a way of specifying a language. It has the set of all the words that are valid in English. But to recognize English is something different. It's a different process. We're talking about different language levels, and this is kind of the first language level we will talk about. As we go through the course, we'll talk about higher levels of languages, which allow us to recognize kind of different classes of languages. And so far, we've talked about the first class, which is the regular class of languages. They are composed of unioning, concatenating, and repeating elements. Okay. And so today we're going to talk about how to recognize languages. And this is finite automata. Okay. So automata, that means something which is automated. Okay. So automatic is probably the word in English that you would see the root word automata for. So something which you can kind of effectively run automatically. So Regular languages can be recognized by finite automata. These are sometimes called finite state machines. So you will see me use the acronym FSM, finite state machines. And I'll talk a little bit about the finite part. Okay? And we're going to start with this set of finite automata called deterministic finite automata. And if I have time, I'll talk about things which are not deterministic. DFAs are really easy to understand. Here is a state. Okay. And my mom, when I was growing up, would always say to me, aren't you in a state? And usually that state was grumpy. Okay. And so we sometimes label states in order to give them meaning. So you can be grumpy. You can be happy. That's a state. You can be odd, which I am. Or sometimes I'm even. Okay. These are states. Okay, so states really I'm going to just represent as circles. Now sometimes they have names to define them, what state they are. Okay. And then we have transitions. A transition takes me from one state to another state. So perhaps I move from even, or sort of from odd to even by reading, for example, a uh, zero for some reason. Okay. In other words, this transition, this arrow from one state to another with a direction on it, implies that I can move from the state odd to the state even when I have some input, zero. Okay. So transitions deal with input. And a state is really where I am. Okay. Now, in a finite automata, we need to indicate where to start. Right? So here I have four states. I don't know where to start. Okay. You will all remember your start state. This is your start state. You don't remember that? <laughs> Think way back. Like, so a glass of Chardonnay, <laughs> some Al Green music, and then this happens, and then you started. OK? <laughs> that's the start state, if you missed your grade 11 sex class. OK, that's a start state there. So this is going to indicate where to start. And then I can have transitions out like this. And maybe I put A and B and C and D like that. So here is a finite automata 
with four states okay, and some transitions. And now I need to say, well, what's a good state? So a final state will indicate this is a state that I'm happy to finish in. Okay, so let's call those two final states. And I'm going to mark those with a double circle. That is, it's a state with another circle inside of it, or outside of it, depending on your perspective. Okay, so that is, it's two circles indicating a final state. And these are sometimes called accepting states. And we'll see this allows us to distinguish different words which we want or do not want in our language. Okay? So these final states are really the thing which determine or allow us to differentiate between one language and another. Okay, so here's an example. In CS241, you program an assembly language, which makes the course really fun. Okay? And so there are some key words that you need in assembly language. There's, in fact, a set of 17 different instructions, which students would have been familiar with in the first nine lectures. This is a language, right? which is why I'm calling it L. It is a finite set of alphabet symbols. So here's sigma. And in this course, sigma means this is an alphabet. So the alphabet I'm describing is the lowercase letters, the uppercase letters, and the digits 0 through 9. Okay? So I would like to make a DFA for this. So remember that every finite state machine has a start state. Then we say, OK, so I'm going to take these words one at a time. Okay, so I could have a B, and an E, and a Q. And if I see a B followed by an E followed by a Q, I'm going to accept that word. Okay. So I'm 1 17th done. How would I handle B and E? Which is a branch not equal to instruction if you care. What do I do? You're all going to fail. Yes? The same thing, a new path. OK, starting from here, like draw a B down. OK, that is a good idea, but premature. OK? <laughs> so here's this thing about deterministic finite automata. I only want one choice out of a state with a certain letter. OK? So we're going to get to this. This is an excellent idea, Ross. OK? But not yet. OK? So if I don't, if I only want one transition out at a time, okay. how can I actually do that? So I want to keep this B. What would I have to do now? Yeah. Okay, so something like this, and an N on it, I guess, and then. And then you branch to the right of the Q. Okay. So down to here yeah. with. Yes, any. Yeah. Uh, no, that's a good question. Let's just see. So let's see what words we accept now. So if I read a B followed by an E followed by a Q, that's fine. I accept that word. That is, I start in the start state, I read those three letters, and I'm in an accepting state. That's a good word. I read a B, and now I read an N, so I take this path, and then I read another E. That's fine. Okay, so the fact that I have two E's here isn't a problem at all. I certainly don't want to reuse those E's. You might be tempted to say, oh, I'm going to save some space. I'll go kind of, you know, over here on nothing. And now I've got the trouble with this is if I read a B followed by an N followed by lambda, which means nothing, which I'll talk about in a minute. Now I read EQ. So now I've got Benek. Uh, B and EQ is not a valid word in my language. So I don't want that to happen. So in fact, I do need to put an E over here. Huh? Okay. We can keep... What's that? Wouldn't it stop? Well, no. So when I say stop, I need to get to an accepting state at the end. If there's more stuff to read, I'm going to keep reading it. Yep. Yep. In this picture right now, yes. Uh, no, because there might be... So in fact, if I did that, if I had B and E, uh, I love computers. OK, there. Huh? If I had this, B, nothing, E, if I stop there, I don't accept it, because that's not a final state. But you 
have BNE, right? I do have BNE. But if I have BNE, I do. So you might say, well, maybe this should be an accepting state. Oh, but now I accept a word, B. And as Shakespeare said, not B. <laughs> okay? That's the answer, okay? So I don't want B here, right? So right now, my F finite automata accepts B, and I don't want to accept the word B because not, it's not in my language. So you have to be careful about where you put these accepting states. Okay, okay so we've got those. And we could continue to add things like add. Notice that add doesn't have any duplicate of the previous thing. So we could continue to add these. And we're going to get this finite automata that's pretty big okay. by the end with all of those 17 different uh, words in it. Okay. So this gets big. All right, I got lots of things coming out like that. Okay. So one question yeah. on that. Um, would that accept B E Q A? OK, so let's see. So if I read B E Q, I get to this state. Now I read some more input. That's a very good question. What happens? Okay. Well, I haven't talked about this. Okay. So that leads me to the, I'll start with this third point. I, I want to specify what is right. That is, I'm not going to specify what is wrong. In other words, I will say what I want, and if you don't give me that, I reject it. This is a lot like marriage. Okay? <laughs> so I will tell you what I want. If I get something different, I don't like it. So I want a BEQ. I want a BNE. If I happen to read BNF, you might say there's no F here. Well, that means that I go to an error state and I reject the word. And the reason why I don't draw those error states is because, in fact, from this transition, everything other than an E would be rejected. So I have to say, like, oh, A, B, C, D, F, so on. And that takes me to some other state over here, which is not accepting. And then, of course, if I'm in this state, then I have to read every symbol. And likewise, every other state needs to go there. So if you thought this was messy before, it's really messy now. So instead of having this error state, I'm going to just leave it implicit. If I don't say it, that means I go to that error state, and I just stay there and read the rest of my input. Huh? Yeah? You have words like add and add d d d Yes. OK. How would you choose between those? Oh. Well, you could have multiple accepting states. But if you went add d d it would just be done. But if you wanted to add a new e now, that would be Another done, done? Like that is. To know that like you're not done yet after A, B, B, and like. Okay, so which which kind of how many D's do you want? I want two or three. Okay. So there's two and there's three. But isn't it done after two? How does it know that I? If I have more input to read. Oh, that's the language. Well, no, no, no. So it so in some senses this is the specification for the language. I have to talk about how to use the specification. Gotcha. Okay. So here, it really depends on, do I have more input? So in fact, my algorithm, which will implement this, will say, do I have more input? Once I'm done reading the input, I ask, am I in a good state? Right? This is, that's how you decided I have a good day. Okay? I'm at home in bed. That's a good day. Okay? I'm in a Turkish jail. Not a good day. Okay? So you ask yourself, at the end of the day, am I in an accepting state or not accepting state? So this won't accept add a D. If that's all my input, I stop here. I reject that or don't accept it. Okay, okay. so I'm going to skip this. Okay. Here's one more exercise we'll do. Okay, so let's suppose I have a simple alphabet like A, B, C. Okay. Can someone tell me the finite automata for strings with exactly one A and one B and no C's? I'll give you a hint. There's a start state. Sorry? What do I do? I go loop? Oh. On an A and a B? Well, I agree this has an A and a B. Okay. In fact, what language does this accept right now? Nothing. Good. I need an accepting state. 
So notice what this accepts. This accepts an A. Yes. It accepts a B, but it also accepts ABBA. A, B, B, A. Okay. It accepts all kinds of words. Every word that has some number of A's or some number of B's. I want exactly one A and exactly one B. Okay. Oh. Why did you lock it? Cynthia, did you do that? Okay. Time's up. Exactly. <laughs> I will leave this as an open exercise for you. We'll start there. I will see you next class.